everybody, and as always, welcome to high school basketball tonight. It's the Northwest District Division Four Finals in girls basketball here at Ottawa Glendorf High School. My name is John Zerby. Beside me tonight, Josiah Stover. We have the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, the number two seed, taking on the number four seed, Miller City Wildcats. Josiah, we're in for a good one tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Miller City coming over that big win over the number one seed, Ottaville, in overtime. So kind of unexpected to be here tonight, you know, but they're they're going to be ready to go. And for this Grove team, you know, the number two seed in this area, you know, kind of expected them to be here tonight, you know, with players like Lauren Akmudi and Nicole Nesby. So, as you said, it should be a good game tonight. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the starters tonight for Miller City. You have number 15, Ava Ruck, she's a five foot four inch senior. Number 20, Jordan Snipke, she's a five foot six inch senior. Number 30, Isabel Rena, she's a five foot three inch senior. Number 34, Andrea Fowl, she's a five foot five inch junior. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Wildcats, number 44, Maddie Erfer, she's a five foot six inch senior. The Wildcats are coached by Ross Hireman. They finished the season 16 and seven, four and three overall in the PCL. For the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, starting for them, a name we've mentioned a lot, talked about a lot, we'll say a lot tonight. Number two, Lauren Ockmoody, she's a five foot seven inch junior. Number five, Ruth Myers, a five foot five inch sophomore. And then Lauren rounding out for the Bulldogs, number 21, Kendall Paldy, she's a five foot nine inch sophomore. Number 22, Abby Stecksholdy, a five foot six inch senior. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Bulldogs, number 23, Nicole Nesby. She's a six-foot sophomore. They are coached by Brian Schrader, 19 and five overall, six and two, and six and one in the PCL. We have covered Columbus Grove a, a couple times this year, Josiah. We've seen all the things that they can do. Lauren Ockmoody is a special player. Yeah, absolutely. Does a little bit of everything for this Columbus Grove team. She'll have the ball in her hands for the majority of the possession. We'll see what. Miller City does early to try to limit her touches, but you know, you know the ball's going to eventually come back to her. So we'll go ahead and get this thing tipped off tonight. Nicole Nesby will go up against Andrea Fowl as the crowd is ready to go in this Division Four District Final at Ottawa Glendorf and Columbus Grove is going to start off with the very first possession tonight. We want to thank our quarter sponsors. There's a turnover by the Wildcats quickly. That was Andrea Fowl getting the turnover. A production products in Grove. They're hiring great opportunities to advance in a free, free medical site medical clinic. You can apply today at Midway, MidwayProducts.com. Thank you for Production Products Inc. in Columbus Grove as Miller City starts this thing off with a turnover, Josiah. Yeah, as you see, Miller City face guarding off Moody early on. We're going to have to see if some of those other role players for Columbus Grove can step up. Players like Paul T, players like Nesby, kind of carry that load until Off Moody can get loose. First triple try by Miller City is Ava Ruck, and she knocks down the triple to give the Wildcats the first score of the game on the simplified scoring scoreboard. Three to nothing, Miller City. And Columbus throw quickly back down the floor. This is Ruth Myers. Myers in the corner. Shot is missed. Good rebound. Shot went up by Abby Stenshaw. He missed, but a good rebound by the Wildcats. Yeah, and you'd like to think this Grove team is not used to somebody face guarding Lauren Ockwood, yeah. but she's faced that all year long. You know, trying to figure out this kind of box and one that Miller City's playing. And so far, uh, Columbus Grove hasn't been able to find the bucket. So Miller City here with a great crowd. Great crowd on both sides, traveling not very far. OG about halfway for both teams. Triple try by Andrea Fowl, misses. Rebound by Grove, and Akbudi's on the move quickly. She gets the ball over to Palti. Palti hangs on to it. Kendall Palti turns and looks, gets it to Stecksholdy. Stecksholdy triple try, just a little long, and rebound comes down to Isabel Rena. Rena with the basketball, takes the ball to the hole, and that pushes that Miller City lead on the simplified scoring scoreboard, five to zero. Well, we see Miller City early, their game plan is if they can get out early, get some easy buckets in transition, they're going to do that. And so far, they've been successful. Columbus Grove trying to figure some things out here. Not reached the scoreboard just yet as Abby Steck showed with the basketball. She drives the baseline, kicks it over to Nicole Nesby. Nesby 
over to Myers. Myers looking for Kendall Pauldy. Pauldy skipped past the sexually. Sexually drives the baseline, puts it up and in on the simplified scoring scoreboard. Yeah, and that's what Columbus Grove has to do. Move the ball side to side quickly against this box and one. And they did that, found Stexualty on the backside, and she was able to drive to the rim. Close to a turnover there by Miller City, but Ava Ruck hangs on to it. It's going to reset things. Isabel Rena with the basketball. Rena gets it inside, looking. Triple try from, Ant, from Maddie Erfurt. Just a little bit short. Looks like Nicole and Nesby's going to come down with it. They're going to say it's a jump ball. Possession's going to stay with Miller City. Well, I like what Miller City's done so far against that 2 3 zone. Passing the ball into that post player coming to the elbow and finding that shooter on the backside. Just not able to knock it down, but it's been successful finding some open shots. This is Jordan Schnipke with the basketball. She kicks it over to Erford. Erford. Over to Ruck. Ruck. Back to Erford. Miller City being extremely patient, getting in their set here. Columbus Grove resetting their defense. This is Isabel Rena. Rena with the basketball. Being really pressured by Ruth Myers. Yeah, Columbus Grove in this 2-3 zone doesn't like to sit back. Likes to pressure those guards to get another open three. Rena with the long Yeah, good try. rebound. Good second opportunity for Miller City. And my goodness, what a nice bounce for Andrea Powell. She gets it to go. 7-2 to Wildcats on the simple fly scoring scoreboard. Yeah, Andrea Fowl getting her own rebound, or getting her rebound on the offensive end, then turns around, finds a little space, and knocks down, as you said. Got a little bit of friendly roll there. <laughs> Hit the rim a couple times and goes down. Got a couple of those so far. Nice touch for the Wildcats. This is Lauren Akmudi. Akmudi double team all the way past the three-point line. They're looking for Nicole Nesby, but they're going to turn the ball over, and Miller City is going to get that turnover. Good defense by the Wildcats. And we're going to get a timeout by Coach Brian Schrader. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we're going to just stay right here. I think, like you said just a little bit earlier, Josiah, Miller City's come out aggressive. Columbus Grove's had a hard time adjusting. Yeah, they're you know attacking the rim, trying to get the ball into that post player, but they're doing a good job of skipping that pass, you know, finding that backside shooter, you know, but also on the offensive glass there, got a couple opportunities where they got a rebound, found a shooter on the outside. We saw that from Foul earlier, got her own rebound, turned around, and made that shot. Um, so you know, just Miller has been the more aggressive team here so far. I want to thank Production Products in Grove. They're hiring. They are offering great opportunities to advance and also a free on-site medical clinic. You can apply today at MidwayProducts.com. That's Production Products in Grove. Looks like we have a little bit of confusion down there and uh, Grove playing good defense. And Coach Ross Hireman is going to go ahead and call another 30-second timeout. How many times have we seen timeout after timeout this year? We're back-to-back -back timeouts, good defense by the Bulldogs. Well, we see Columbus Grove coming out in that Full court pressure there, making it difficult, trying to outnumber them um, when they get the ball in. So Coach Hireman seeing his player in trouble and calls a good timeout. Understand these possessions, especially in tournament time, are so important. Don't want to give up an easy one that leads to an easy bucket for Columbus Grove. So we'll see what they do. Now they have, looks like they got four in a line coming out of this timeout. Inbounding the basketball for Miller City is Ava Ruck. She gets the ball in to Andrea Fowl. Kicks it over to Lou Michael, who's entered the ball game for the Wildcats. Grove staying in that 2 3 zone. Looks like we almost might have a turnover, and it is going to be a turnover on the Wildcats. Good defense by Columbus Grove. Yeah, we see those two guards pressuring. Out in that 2-3 zone, not sitting back, allowing Miller City to just pass it around. They get a lot of pressure on them, force the turnover there. Ockabody with the basketball, continuing to be double teamed. She gets it over to Allison Thompson. Triple try in the corner by Ruth Myers, and that closes that gap on the simple flight scoring scoreboard. 
It is 7-5, Miller City still in control of this game, but almost a turnover, and they're going to get a foul on Columbus Grove. That is our first foul of the game, and our first foul means we want to talk about production products in Grove. They're hiring, offering great opportunities to advance at a free on-site medical clinic. You can apply today at midwayproducts.com. We want to thank them for sponsoring our first foul of the quarter. Been a clean quarter so far. Yeah, both teams continue to be aggressive, but playing within the rules of the game. And See Miller City once again attacking that rim. Another good rebound on the glass for the Wildcats. Lou Michael came in and got the offensive rebound, and Miller City just out hustling Columbus Grove right now. Ava Ruck got the offensive rebound. Another shot there, but finally missed shot by Ava Ruck, and Nicole Nesby comes down with it as Columbus Grove is on the move. This is Allison Thompson. Thompson over to Myers. Myers now to Aukmoody. Aukmoody still double team. She's going to get it inside to Nesby. Nesby over to Kendall Palti. Palti in the lane, takes it, and almost gets it to go. Going to send herself to the free throw line and get an opportunity for our first free throw tonight. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima Walpock Delphus and St. Mary's is our free throw sponsor. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Palti's first free throw is missed. And some substitutions are going to enter the game for Columbus Grove. We have Elise Fortman, Jade Seifer going to enter the game. And for Miller City, we have Haley Warnament coming in the game. We also have Chelsea Erford. Second Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is good by Kendall Palti. 7-6 on the simplified scoring scoreboard. Yeah, Kendall Paulty hitting her average. She's about 50% from the free throw line, so knocks down that one and two to cut this to a one-point lead for the Wildcats. Just about two minutes to go here. First quarter in Ottawa Glandorf, Division Four District Final Girls. And what a nice block by Lauren Ockbooty. Gets the turnover for Columbus Grove, and they're in transition. This is Ockbooty. She kicks it over to Paulty. Paulty thought about the triple, drives baseline. Gonna push it back out to Aukwood and she's gonna reset things. Columbus Grove being patient on offense. Diagnosing the Miller City defense. This is Auk Moody. Step back, triple try, just a little long. Rebound comes down to Miller City. Good rebound by Hort Haley Warnemont. Quickly up to Ava Ruck. Misses. Good rebound by Elise Fortman. It's been up and down the floor, Josiah. Yeah, here we go. Lauren, where she wants to see if she can attack in that transition before Miller City sets up their defense. But Miller City so far doing a great job of getting back forcing her to get rid of the ball, put it in somebody else's hands. Jade Seifer triple try misses, but a great rebound by Aukmoody, just a little bit short. And another rebound comes down to Chelsea Erfer. We can see the both teams playing a little tight right now. Yeah, both teams still trying to figure each other out. You know, these big games, probably some nerves going on right now. So, um, but you know, both teams continue to be aggressive, attacking the rim, especially when the opportunities present themselves. And, Right now, Miller City getting back into that attacking offense against this 2-3 zone. This is Chelsea Erford with the basketball. She's going to kick it over to Ava Ruck. Excuse me, Isabel Rena. Rena with the basketball. Rena over to Haley Warnemont. Loses the basketball, and that's going to be a turnover. Columbus Grove is going to come up with the third turnover for Miller City. Jade Seach comes up with the steal. Columbus Grove trying to get the ball inside to Nicole Nesby. Nicole Nesby not on the scoreboard just yet. She's one of the powerhouse players on this Columbus Grove team. Triple try there by Ava Ruck misses, and it's going to go to Columbus Grove. Yeah, Lou Michael being physical down there. Actually gets a break here at the end of the quarter, but just being really physical down there with Nicole Nesby, making it difficult for Columbus Grove to get an easy pass in. And forced a couple turnovers just by her physicality. We've seen Nicole Nesby a few times this year, and you know, one of the things I've noticed is she is one of those that, you know, you, you, you hear a lot and read a lot about Lauren Ockmoody. She's one of those that can turn a game around. We've seen her in the basically the Northwestern Conference Championship game against Delphus Jefferson have an incredible third quarter. I guess Coach Brian Schrader wants to get her involved. 
Yeah, and for this Columbus Grove team, got to figure out ways, you know, especially with Auk Moody being doubled most of the game here as she gets an open look. And that is just sweet. Lauren Auk Moody at the buzzer, knocks down the triple, gives the Columbus Grove Bulldogs the lead, and it's 9-7 to seven on the silver fly scoring scoreboard. One quarter in the book. Second quarter coming up. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. City Wildcats on the simplified scoring scoreboard. We want to thank our corner sponsor, Production Products in Grove. They are hiring, offering great opportunities to advance your career and also a free on-site medical clinic. You can apply today at midwayproducts.com. 9-7 on the simplified scoring scoreboard. It's Grove quickly driving the lane. That's Allison Thompson giving them now a four-point lead. Well, you see the adjustment that Columbus Grove made. Having Auk Moody now set the screen, a little bit of confusion between the Wildcats on who to defend. And here we go, Columbus Grove with that pressure in the full court, forcing another turnover. Right now they've got that four to two. Miller City with the four, Grove with two. Turnover, so turnover factor could be a, a big thing as we continue on in this game as Grove now. Holding on to this four-point lead, Abby Stechschuld. He thought about it for a minute, went ahead and tried it. Good rebound comes down to Ruth Myers. They're going to reset things for the Bulldogs. Corner, Nicole Nesby. They found Nicole Nesby, and she converts 13-7 on the simplified point scoreboard. Yeah, just another adjustment I'm sure Coach Schrader and his staff talked about was we have to get the ball into Nesby. It looks like we got another turnover, a travel. But for Columbus Grove, getting the ball inside, yeah. forcing a little bit more of this Miller City defense to guard some of those other players. And we're seeing some of those adjustments play out here in the second quarter. Nesby, just a sophomore, showing such promise. This Grove team, they got a little bit of everything. Some seniors, some juniors, some sophomores all contributing. Abby Stecksholdy gets it to fall, and Grove is starting to roll. Miller City's gonna get a timeout and Columbus Grove in full control of this game, 15 to seven on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Columbus Grove now really starting to rally, Josiah. Yeah, some of those, you know, the quick 6-0 rally here from Columbus Grove, and you know, Coach Schrader's pretty happy when their other players are stepping up, especially on the offensive side of the floor. We know Ock Moody can score at any time, you know, but when you start getting those other players and forcing Miller City to kind of spread out their defense, close out, you know, that allows then Ock Moody to come in later, you know, and, and find some more space. So we're seeing that here in this second quarter, some really good adjustments by Coach Schrader and his staff. You know, the pressure kind of really picked it up. It was Miller City early, but Columbus Grove has really changed that momentum. Columbus Grove defeated Kaleida the other night, 45-38, to get into this district final. And now Miller City trying to make something happen. They've been scoreless for a while here. Been really struggling with this Columbus Grove pressure. This is Andrea, excuse me, Isabel Rena with the ball. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. It's going to be our first foul of the quarter. I'd like to mention Production Products and Grove. Thank them for our first call of the quarter. You can uh, apply there today. They're hiring midwayproducts.com. Shot missed by the Wildcats. Jordan Stimpke missed, and it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to stay with Miller City. Yeah, Miller City continuing to battle on the offensive glass. You see three or four players really trying to get that offensive board, and they had a lot of success tonight. And once again, two jump balls in a row, so the ball will now go to Grove. Grove doing a really nice job of not fouling and going after the basketball, especially when the ball comes inside the paint. And the aggressive defense now creates another opportunity here offensively for the Bulldogs. This is Allison Thompson, hit a triple just a little bit ago. Gets it over to Abby Stecksholdy. Stecksholdy thought about it. Gonna drive the lane, kicks it over to Ruth Myers. Myers in the lane, back to Stecksholdy. Over to Thompson. Thompson triple try misses. 
and almost the rebound. It looks like it's gonna stay here for Columbus Grove. Um, Columbus Grove moves that ball really well. They've been found, found a couple of shooters wide open. Just unable to make that on the last one, Allison Thompson, but they're getting some good shots, especially out of this box and one. Stexually gonna inbound the basketball over the corner for Kendall Pauldy. Pauldy looking for Stexually. Stexually was not ready for it, and that's gonna be a turnover for the Bulldogs. Miller City on the move. This is Lou Michael with the basketball. Michael over to Ava Ruck. Ruck, she was looking for Michael and she wasn't looking for it. Another turnover for the Wildcats. And the ball will go back to Columbus Grove. Miller City unable to put any points on the basket so far here in the second quarter. Columbus Grove just making it difficult. Sometimes thinking that's two, three zones, they, it's easy to pass, but they're doing a really good job of keeping the pressure on them, forcing more turnovers. This is Ruth Myers in the lane. Paul Nesby being doubled that time. Specialty back to Myers. Myers triple try. Ruth Myers misses. Rebound by Miller City. We're going to get a foul. Good rebound by Isabel Rena. They're going to get a foul underneath for Columbus Grove. Looks like they're going to get Kendall Pulte on that foul, her first foul. Foul shots have been hard to come by. We've only seen two so far. Both teams playing aggressive, but well disciplined as well as Grove breaks the press and almost breaks the press as Lauren Ockmoody, what a great job of knocking the ball away and almost taking out some of her teammates on the bench. You'll we'll see some of that athleticism, her closing down that distance and almost volleyball spiked that ball <laughs> out of bounds and the ball goes back to Wildcats. So Lou Michael with the basketball, she kicks it over to Ava Ruck. Ruck, back to Michael. Michael. Looking inside, Grove quickly playing that aggressive defense, making things difficult. Five minutes here in the second quarter. Good pass inside to Stipke. Stipke misses. Good rebound by Ockmoody. She's on the move. Lauren Ockmoody over to Ruth Myers. Myers back to Kendall Pauldy. Triple try. Kendall Pauldy knocks it down. 18-7 Columbus Grove on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Yeah, Grove did such a great job of pushing the tempo on that rebound. Found the open shooter, and Pauldy was able to knock down the three. Almost a 10-second call. Nice break by Miller City inside with the basketball. That was Maddie Erford. Kicks it out for the triple try. And that's going to be a miss by Ava Ruck. Lauren Ockmoody on the move once again. Pulls up. Thought about it, and they are going to get her for the traveling call. And that's going to be another turnover for the Bulldogs. They're fourth in the game as we get some substitutions for the Wildcats. Looks like Haley Wernemont's going to come into this game. So is Chelsea Erford. Chelsea Erford. Miller City started out hot, came out right away, hitting a couple baskets. But since then, it's been a real struggle to get any points. Yeah, well, Grove doing a good job of really knocking down that post player. And once again, gets another turnover here. It's Pulte attacking the rim. Ock Moody thought about the triple. She does pull the triple. Just a little bit long, battling for the rebound. Comes down to Miller City. Nice rebound there by Ava Ruck, and it's quickly up the floor. Pass inside, missed shot. Good rebound by Maddie Erford, and the ball's going to come back to Nicole Nesby as Kendall Baldy ends up, ends up with it. And now Columbus Grove has the basketball as we've seen a little bit of transition basketball there. Up and down the floor, Kendall Baldy, left hand and all, drives all the way. They're going to get a foul. Looks like Kendall Baldy's going to get an opportunity to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Yeah, Kendall Baldy there bringing the ball up strong and then found herself with a little bit of space attacking the rim there. Once again, goes to the Lee's Famous Chicken free throw line. Kendall Baldy's the only one who shot free throws tonight. She converts on her first. I want to thank Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima Walpock Delta, St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Pulte, a second opportunity from the charity stripe. And she's just a little bit short. Good rebound comes down to Haley Warnemont. The Grove continues, even on a missed free throw, continues to do that full court pressure, making it difficult for this Wildcats team. Miller City drives the lane, 
Shot goes up, missed shot. That major foul, Blue Gun comes down to the Bulldogs and Columbus Grove once again on the move. Kendall Fulte kicks it over. This is Jade Seifer. Jade Seifer comes in, knocks down the triple. 22 to seven on the simple five scoring scoreboard. They have opened up the floodgates, Josiah. Yeah, the third three of the night for this Grove. Two from other players outside of, I'm sorry, three from other players outside of Lauren Ockbooty. So Columbus Grove shooting the ball well here in this first half. It was tight in the first quarter with Columbus Grove just getting the lead at the very end of the quarter, and now they've opened this thing up. Miller City trying to battle back. This is Chelsea Earth for triple try. Good rebound by Elise Fortman. They're on the move. Fortman passes over to Seeker. Seeker almost loses it, maintains control. It looks like she is going to turn the ball over, and it's going to be Miller City possession. So Columbus Grove getting out to this big lead, 22-7 on the Simplified Scoring scoreboard. We want to thank Simplified Scoring for making Flooring Simple our tonight's scoreboard sponsor on WOSM. Just about two minutes to go in the second quarter, 22-7. This is Isabel Reina in, Reina in the lane, misses. Good rebound by Lauren Akamudi. Akamudi with the basketball. You know, Akamudi's done so many things tonight. She only has three points. Yeah, Miller City's doing a good job there as Columbus Grove gets the ball into Nesby and she draws some contact. But yeah, she, you know, when she's not scoring a whole lot of point, points, she does a good job facilitating the offense, moving the ball, you know, draws so much attention that other players are able to get open just because of the attention she draws to herself. Such an unselfish player, too, as Nicole Nesby gets her opportunity now at the Lee's famous Western Chicken. Free throw line, she converts her first. Aquamini does a little bit of everything. Scoring over 20 points a game, averaging seven rebounds a game, averaging over three assists a game, and she can do it all. Now this Columbus Grove team feeling in control early in this game, feeling good about where they are. Nicole Nesby, a second opportunity, knocks it down, pushing this lead to 24 to seven on the simplified flooring scoreboard. And Grove not letting up on this full court pressure here for the 2-1-2 full court as we see a quick double there. Millicent is able to handle it, but then ball goes away. Looks like we'll have another jump ball. Indeed, another jump ball. It's going to stay with Miller City. And they're going to inbound the basketball. Just outside of the paint. And they're going to turn the ball over. It looks like they were trying to get the ball inside to Lou Michael, but just a little bit too much on it. And that's going to be another turnover for the Wildcats. Kendall Pauly with the basketball. Trying to get the ball to Lauren Ackmany. She's covered, so she gets it to Abby Stickshulty. Stickshulty with the basketball. Drives it up the left side of the floor. Back to Pauly. Pauly. Top of the key. Going to set things up. Over to Ruth Myers. Myers back to Stickshulty. Stickshulty over to Ackmany. Ackmany looking in sky. Skip pass to Ruth Myers and had just a little bit too much juice on it. That's going to be a turnover for the Bulldogs. It was a good look there by Ock Moody. Ruth Myers found some space on the backside, but a little bit too high, and both teams exchange a turnover. Marina with the basketball, kicks it over to Jordan Schnipke. Schnipke now passing it back to Rena. Rena driving the lane back to Schnipke. Schnipke from the corner misses. Good rebound by Kelsey Arthur and some badly needed points by the Wildcats. 24 to 9 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Columbus Grove still in control. Awkward with the basketball. Triple try. Rims in and out. Good rebound by Miller City. That was Ava Ruck. On the run is little Michael. Michael with the basketball. And now she's going to get her opportunity to get to the free throw line. Lou Michael getting herself a chance for at least Hamilton Mystery Chicken free throw. Yeah, we see. That Wildcats had a lot of success there in that first quarter when they're being aggressive and attacking the rim. We've seen that in the last two possessions, they're just being aggressive, getting some offensive rebounds, attacking the rim. Opportunity now to put some points on the board. So New Michael gets one scoreboard. It's a 
nice job of knocking down that Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw. She's going to get a second opportunity as we're one under one minute to go here in the second quarter. Misses that one. Akamudi comes down with it. Columbus Grove holding on to a 14-point lead in this Division Four Northwest District Final. Winner will go to the Elida Regional next Wednesday night. Akamudi in the lane. Lauren Akamudi converts. Yeah, I think that's what Lauren needs to do a little bit more is look to attack the rim. She's so good in that step back three. But if she continues to attack the rim, it's hard for these Miller City Wildcats defenders to stay in front of her. 15 seconds to go here, Miller City. Trying to get something going here. Isabel Reen with the basketball. Gets it inside. Blocked shot by Nicole Nesby with four seconds to go. Ock Moody's going to take it. Tries the last shot of the half just a little bit short. But that's just okay because Columbus Grove with a commanding lead in this district final. It's 26 to 10 over the Miller City Wildcats on the simplified scoring scoreboard. We'll have more action for you. Second half action. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Scoreboard, Josiah Stover here, John Zerby as well. Josiah, just what are some of the things both teams are talking about here at halftime? Yeah, well, you look for Miller City, really struggled in that second quarter. Only scored three points uh, for the entire quarter. You know, got to continue to be aggressive. I think they came out early, jumped out, scored seven quick points because they were attacking the rim. They're getting the ball down low, kicking it out quickly. You know, got to find that again. This pressure of Columbus Grove is really making it difficult for them, but they got to find some ways to get some easy buckets. And for Columbus Grove, the, the coaching staff has to be happy, you know, and probably just talking about limit some of the turnovers. They made some careless mistakes. Um, but, you know, seven different players have scored for wow. Columbus Grove. You know, Lauren Ockmoody averages 20, only had five there, you know, but she's getting a lot of contribution from other players. So just continue to do what to do, take care of the ball. Yeah, very well said. And we'll have second half, half action here on WSN. 26 10, Columbus Grove on top of Miller City. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. a free on-site medical clinic. You can apply today at midwayproducts.com. 26 to 10 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Just John Zerby here with Josiah Stober on at the Division Four District Final Girls Basketball out of a Glendorf Columbus Grove holding on to a companion lead. As that's the first turnover of the second half. Good start for the Miller City Wildcats. Yeah, Maddie Erford doing a good job of getting in front of Nicole Nesby. Gets a turnover, an opportunity here. Wildcats struggled on the offensive end there in the second quarter, only scoring three points. So we'll see if they come out shooting, which they do. Big triple try by Maddie Erford, and that is badly what the Miller City Wildcats needed as now the lead is 26-13 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Defense, defense, defense. Lauren Ockmoody with the basketball for Columbus Grove. We've mentioned her name a lot. Prolific score, but has done a lot of different things tonight. But she's going to pull up the triple just a little bit long. Rebound comes down to Miller City, and they're going to get a foul. And Miller City comes out with a good second half start. That's the first call of the quarter, and it's production products in Brewer. They are hiring, and they offer great opportunities with a free on site medical clinic. Midwayproducts.com. We want to thank production products. Miller City with the basketball. This is Isabel Rina. Rina kicks it over. This is Andrea Fowl. Fowl with the basketball. Now in the corner to Maddie Erford. Erford looking inside. Almost a turnover, but Rina does a nice job of controlling the basketball. Baseline shot by Jordan Schmitke, and Miller City has come alive. Yeah, Miller City doing what they did there in that first quarter, being aggressive, knocking down some big shots, a quick 5-0 run for them. As Columbus Grove must figure out now how they can get 
their offense going just like they did in the second quarter. Looking inside for the Nesby was Kendall Balti, and Akmudi saves it so that there isn't a turnover, and Lauren Akmudi smoothly just knocks down a baseline jumper. Yeah, she can score in such a variety of ways, and almost a turnover here by Miller City. Looks like it's gonna be a jump ball, but it almost looked like they played good defense against her, but she was able to rise and knock down that long two. 28 to 15 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Columbus Grove in command of this game. Miller City clawing themselves back into it. This is Andrea Fowl with the basketball to Rena. Rena trying to make something happen. Paul T gets her hand on the basketball, almost a turnover, and it is going to be a turnover. Kendall Paul T does a great job defensively. Substitution for the Wildcats. Lou Michael played a lot of quality minutes for the Wildcats in the first half as Miller City comes out with the full court press and Lauren Nakamuti is going to bring the ball up herself. Nakamuti drives left hand in the lane, uses the glass in and out. Nicole Nesby there, and Nicole Nesby getting herself back on the scoreboard, pushing that lead back to 15, 30 to 15 on the simplified scoring scoreboard. Miller City trying to get back into it. This is Jordan Schnipke. Schnipke got it over to Rena. What a beautiful block by none other than Laura Nakamuti. Yeah, she's so quick to recover there. Helped out and then found her man and got up and blocked that shot. Burford now kicks it over to Ruck. Ruck back to Rena. Rena with the basketball. Runs into Ruth Myers, and that's going to be a foul on the Bulldogs. It's going to be a foul on the floor, so Miller City will have to end down the basketball. Substitution for the Bulldogs. Allison Thompson entering the game for Abby Stecksholdy. Rena enters the basketball. Smart job by Erford to let it pass line as Ruth Myers playing good defense. Paul T creates another turnover. Ock Moody comes up with it. Ock Moody on the move in the corner to Myers. Myers drives into the lane looking back for Ock Moody. Kicks it over to Nicole Nesby. Nesby going baseline and we're going to have a foul. No, we're going to have an offensive foul. Player control foul on Nicole Nesby. <laughs> About four and a half minutes to go here at the Division IV District Final at Ottawa Glandorf. Columbus Grove has been in control. Miller City trying to get back into this one. Doing a good job of going into the lane. And that's going to be Kendall Pulte with the foul. Her third foul. Now she's got to be on Coach Brian Schrader's list to make sure that she might need to get a substitution. And that is going to give an opportunity for Jordan Schnipke to go to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Nifty converts, and Jade Seeker's going to come in and give Pulte that opportunity to go to the bench with those three fouls. Second opportunity by Snipke. Snipke hits them both. Good job, Jordan Snipke. We want to thank Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. And Lima, Wolfhawk, Delphus, and St. Mary's, you can call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Yeah, Miller City picking up that full court pressure. Just trying to change it up against this Bulldogs team. Seeing if they can get some easy turnovers that can lead to some easy points. How do you defend that, Josiah? She steps to the side, steps back, knocks down the triple. Which makes it look really easy. Well, you can see the difference with Miller City. You know, with seven different Grove players scoring there in that first half, they <laughs> yep. switched up their defense, no longer doing that double teaming Ock Moody wherever mm -hmm. she goes. Now they're having to defend every player on the court, so it's really changed the way for Ock Moody to get some open shots. Missed shot in the quarter by Ava Ruck. Ball's gonna be kind of bounced around a little bit, and it's gonna be in favor of Columbus Grove. They're gonna maintain possession, but Lauren Ock Moody comes down the floor, steps to the side, drills the triple. Like you said, she is just an incredible player. 
as it's, she's really stretched the Miller City defense tonight. Off Moody. Calmly bringing the ball up the floor. Drives the lane. He's going to kick it over to Jade Seifer. Seifer now with the basketball. Back to Off Moody. Off Moody in the corner. Skip pass all the way across the floor. She was looking for Allison Thompson. Put a little too much juice on it. That's going to be a turnover from her. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times. Finding the right person to pass it to just a little bit hard over their head, but turnover, going, ball going back to the Wildcats. In the lane for Miller City was Maddie Erfer, but she just met Nicole Nesby. Nesby with a beautiful block, and Ock Moody with a spin move. Jump back, jump shot, nice rebound by Nesby. She's going to get herself to the Lee's famous rescue chicken free throw line. It's that one-two punch of Ock Moody and Nesby right there for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we see Nesby making two plays, one on the defensive end getting the block shot, and then hustling on the backside to get that offensive rebound, goes up and gets fouled. So Nicole Nesby gets her first. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw does not convert. Host of substitutions for Columbus Grove. Allison Thompson in the game. Nesby on her second Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Elise Fortman also in the game for the Bulldogs. 34-17 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Columbus Grove in control over the Miller City Wildcats. Third quarter action here. This is Chelsea Erford driving in the lane. Kicks it over to Ava Ruck. Ruck passes out to Isabel Rena. Rena in the lane, shot goes up. And we're gonna get a foul on the floor before the shot. Gonna maybe catch a break there. Columbus Grove's gonna catch a break. And I believe that'll be foul number four. So next foul, Miller City will shoot free throws. We haven't been in the bonus all night. Grove with 14 fouls. That's Allison Thompson's third shot in the lane. Missed by Miller City, good rebound by Grove, and Ock Moody comes down and controls it. Ock Moody, deep triple try, just a little bit long. Good rebound by Rena. Rena quickly up the floor. She's in transition. Isabel Rena, nice looking play. Takes it coast to coast. Puts the lead to 15, 34 19 on the simplified floor and scoreboard. Yeah, all the success for Miller City has come when they've been aggressive and attacking the rim. Reno was able to do that in transition, but another great pass on the backside to Nicole Nesby for the easy bucket. She had great position, beautiful pass. Nesby converts and almost here a turnover, but now we're going to get a foul on Grove. That's going to be on Elise Fortman, giving this Miller City team now an opportunity to shoot free throws the rest of this quarter. They're going to get Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws for the next two minutes. This is Isabel Rena. The opportunity to shoot two. Her first is up, and it is good. 36 to 20 on the Simplified Flooring Scoreboard. We thank our scoreboard sponsor, Simplified Flooring. Appreciate their support of high school basketball on WOSN. Rena, her second opportunity, and she converts. Bringing the ball up the floor, 36 to 21, under two minutes to go. Ock Moody with the basketball. Looking inside the net, a good pass by Snick, Schulte blocked. Nice block by Miller City, but a three-point try just a little long. Good rebound by Snick, Schulte. Snick, Schulte finds Allison Thompson, and Allison Thompson converts to push this lead back to 17. Well, what a pass there by Snick, Schulte. Finding her teammate under the basket, almost like a no-look pass yeah. there to her teammate. On the other end, Coach Schrader not too happy with that foul, knowing that Miller City has an opportunity to score some points without any time coming off the clock. So Isabel Rena, she's done a good job of gaining herself some free throw opportunities tonight. She converts on her first one. She'll get a second opportunity here. Rena has seven points tonight. 
one of the key players of this Miller City Wildcat team. Second opportunity, nothing but net. Isabel Reno looking sharp from the free throw line. 38-23, Columbus Grove. Lauren Ockmoody with the basketball. Garnering the attention of the Miller City defense. She's dribbling around midcourt. Good defense by Miller City. Ava Rutten doing a good job of keeping Lauren Ockmoody in front of her. The student section likes it. But at the same time, Columbus Grove taking lots of quality time off the clock right now. Isabel, excuse me, Isabel Reyna with the basketball. Reyna passes. Nice looking shot to Andrea Fowl. Reyna started things off with the turnover and converts. Now that lead is 13 on the simplified floor and scoreboard. Yeah, the Wildcat faithful really getting into that, really appreciating that defense. And we saw a double there. Calls the turnover and a good bucket on the other end for the Wildcats. Seen a double, a triple, and now a triple try by Abby Stexel with a great rebound by Allison Thompson to get Columbus Grove a second opportunity here. This is Thompson with the basketball looking inside, but she's going to get called for traveling. It's going to be another turnover for Grove. I'll tell you, I really, really like the energy that Miller City has come out here in this third quarter. They've really fought back after pretty much being dominated in that second quarter. Yeah, big possession here. If they can get a bucket, cut this lead. What a good take, and we'll see. Ball will stay with, I believe, Miller City. 3.7 seconds to go. Lou Michael did a nice job of driving the lane, but Nicole Nesby was there. Rena gonna inbound the basketball. Rena looking, she's gonna kick it far to Ava Ruck. Rich triple try goes a little long, and that's gonna be enough of the third quarter as Columbus Grove still in control of this ball game. 38 to 25 on the simplified floor and scoreboard. Coming back here, it's the final quarter of high school basketball in Division IV Northwest District. You're watching here on WSF. started on the defensive end. Them able to knock down some shots as we got a good long pass into Nicole Nesby and she finishes at the rim. Nicole Nesby, so skilled around the net the rim. Beautiful pass, good footwork. Pushes this lead back to 15. Grove pressing, but it's gonna be a turnover. Isabel Rina looking for an offensive player and just got a little too excited, overthrew it. That's gonna be the 12th turnover for Miller City. Inbound the basketball, Miller City putting tons of pressure on. They're gonna get a foul. And as we already start to see this half, Josiah, Miller City's gotta get some turnovers and they're trying to do everything that they can to do so. Yeah, they're picking up the intensity here to start this fourth quarter, understanding they can't let this game get any farther away from them. So really trying to force the tempo here. But it's hard to do that when you have a player like Ock Moody, who's used to this pressure and is able to handle and bring the ball up. Kendall Paldy back in the game. She went to the bench in the third quarter when she picked up her third foul. One of the better ball handlers for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, along with Ock Moody. And we're going to get another foul by Miller City. And that's going to be the third team foul already here in just 40 seconds of the fourth quarter. And you can see quickly that we may be seeing lots of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws here soon. Balti inbounds the basketball to Steck Schulte. Steck Schulte. Back to Lauren Akamudi. Akamudi guarded by Ava Ruck. Ruck's done a really nice job. Akamudi with 10 points tonight. Nicole Nesby with 11. Great job by Isabel Rina with the turnover, but can't convert. 
and Grove is going to maintain possession. Good job by Apollini to come down with that. Yeah, Akmi not making a very good pass up top. And Rena, as she's done all night, just been really aggressive as Palti takes it to the rim, but Miller City will come down with the ball. Good rebound by Ava Ruck. She gets it to Rena. Rena in the lane. This is Andrea Fowl calling for it. Misses. Ball's on the ground, and it's going to stay here. With Miller City. So we got a substitution for Columbus Grove. Allison Thompson coming back in the game for Kevin Fulte. Also, Maddie Erford's going to check in for Miller City. We're going to get a timeout by Columbus Grove. We're going to take a timeout here. It's 40 to 25. We'll be simplified for more than four. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Sponsoring our scoreboard tonight. 40 to 25 on that scoreboard. Columbus Grove with a 15 point lead over Miller City. Six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. One quarter away from regionals at Elida next Wednesday night at six o'clock. As the winner will take on Toledo, the winner of Toledo Christian and Gibsonburg. Columbus Grove just a few minutes away, feeling that regional berth. But Miller City hanging on, not allowing them to put them away. Nice drive in the lane. That was Ava Ruck missed, but a good rebound by Columbus Grove, and it's going to be a jump ball. Possession is going to stay with Miller City. Miller City continues to be aggressive on that offensive glass. We've seen it countless times tonight where they have two or three bodies just running in there and doing a good job, and Columbus Grove still having a little difficulty rebounding out of that 2-3 zone. Triple try by Erfer. Maddie Erfer's come in tonight and knocked down some triples. She's given them points that they needed. Cuts that lead to 12 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Maddie Erfer, two triples tonight for Miller City. Columbus Grove seems, I, I don't want to call it stall ball, but they're not in any hurry, but a beautiful pass by Ock Moody to Allison Thompson. She gar garnered the attention of the defense and a beautiful cut by Thompson. Well, those are the type of shots Columbus Grove is looking for at this time. Trying to take time off the clock, but if they can get layups, they're going to take him there. A good shot there by number 34, just not able to knock it down. Andrea Fowl misses that one. Good rebound by Aukmudi. Aukmudi drives the lane over to Thompson. Thompson left hand in the lane. Good attempt by Allison Thompson, but a nice rebound to Andrea Fowl. All the way down the floor is Maddie Erford, and she's going to get her opportunity now to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Maddie Erford come alive here in this fourth quarter. Come was on the bench for a little while. Come back in the game and has really given a spark to these Wildcats. Yeah, Miller City needs to continue to attack the rim, especially if they draw some contact. Opportunity to score some points, and they've done a really good job from the free throw line tonight. Make sure that in the post-game show tonight, you can check out all the highlights. We will select a Stolly Hustle Award. You can always check out the highlights of the Stolly Hustle Award winner on our WOSN YouTube page. Stolly Insurance, our Stolly Hustle Award sponsor tonight. Maddie Erford, second opportunity from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Cannot convert, 42-19. Columbus Grove still in control of this game. Akhmudi with the basketball. Thought about the pass, kept it herself, misses. Good rebound by Miller City. That was Ava Ruck and a long triple try by Andrea Fowl. Misses, comes down to Akhmudi, looking down the floor. Nice defense by Maddie Erfer, but Ruth Myers hangs on to it and maintains possession for the Bulldogs. And Coach Brian Trader says, just calm down, ladies. Settle down. Yeah, hasn't liked the last two possessions. Just kind of quick shots for this Grove team. If they're patient, they can get some layups, which they do from Lauren Ockmoody. That was sweet. Lauren Ockmoody in the lane. Getting two more points for the Bulldogs. Nice pass by Isabel Rena to Maddie Erford. Missed triple try, but a good rebound by Andrea Fowl. Maintaining possession for the Wildcats. Fowl back in the lane. Kicks it over to Erford. Erford, another triple try. And gets this one to fall. Maddie Erford, and it's going to be a timeout on the scoreboard. It's Columbus Grove 44, Miller City 32 on the simple line.
we're gonna take a timeout as well. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Back to Ottawa Glendorf High School Division Four District Final Girls Basketball. Columbus Grove clinging to a 12-point lead on our simplified floor and scoreboard. 44 to 32, they will inbound the basketball. That's Kendall Baldy. Columbus Grove can smell a regional berth coming up soon. She inbounds the ball to Nicole Nesby. Back to Palti. Palti breaks the press. Kendall Baldy on the move. Good pass to Ruth Myers. Can't get the layup to go. And a good rebound by Maddie Erford. Erford in transition, coast to coast. Maddie Erford draws the foul from Lauren Ockmoody. She's getting herself back to the least famous risk of chicken free throw line. Yeah, it's all it's been all about that aggressive nature from Miller City attacking the rim, especially to get back into this ball game. You know, down 12, an opportunity to cut it to 10 here with these two free throws. So anytime they can score points without time coming off the clock is huge. Erford misses her first of two Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throws. We want to thank Lee's Famous Recipe and Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken, where home style always happens here. A second opportunity for Maddie Erford. Cannot convert, and the rebound's going to come down to Nicole Nesby, giving Columbus Grove an opportunity now to take off some precious moments of the clock. Allison Thompson with the basketball almost commits a turnover, but maintains possession for Columbus Grove. And Coach Trigger wanting his players to kind of calm down, make sure they ta they're taking care of the ball here. Don't want to give any easy turnovers for Miller City to have an opportunity. And that, what a great play once again by Miller City, just unable to capitalize, but seen that a couple times tonight. Isabel Reyna just taking the ball away from Lauren Ockmoody, but unable to finish at the other end. Oh, that's one of the things I think we've seen a lot from Grove, or Miller City. They're feisty. I mean, they do not give up. They are working themselves back in the game. They just had a, you know, a hard time putting the ball in the bucket. But, you know, as far as effort goes, Miller City cannot be, you know, there's nothing bad that can be said. They've given a great effort tonight. No, it's really been even. It's just been that second quarter that's yep. really harmed them. Unable to score, only scoring three points, but another turnover from Columbus Grove, allowing Miller City to just stay in this game. Well, right now we have 12 turnovers and for Miller City and 11 for Grove. Now that's very unofficial, you know, but uh, it's been about even. I mean, like I said, you know, as, as smothering as the Grove defense has been, Miller City has fought and clawed back. Been very impressed with Isabel Rena as well. She's done a great job of making sure that her team is right back into this game. We're going to take a time out here as well. We're watching High School Basketball on WSN. We're back here at Ottawa Glendorf High School. Three minutes, 13 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter as the Columbus Grove Bulldogs on top of the Miller City Wildcats on the simplified floor and scoreboard, 44 to 32. Miller City inbounding the basketball. Triple try from the corner. Nice shot by Chelsea Erfer. Comes in the game, knocks down the triple. Now this lead is only nine. Yeah, Columbus Grove's allowed them to come back or at least hang around with some unforced turnovers here. We'll see if they can get the ball inside. I'd like to see him go into Nicole Nesby here. She's been solid here in this second half and looks like another turnover here. Coach Schrader's not too happy with that call. I think you said it best. They've hung around. They just have not went away. Every time you thought it was kind of maybe it wouldn't be interesting, they just got back in the game. And here they are with two minutes to go and only down nine. Well, they're going their own 6-0 run here to get them to nine points. Was up to 15, but another long shot, a rebound by Lauren Ockmoody. Lou Michaels triple try misses. Ockmoody with the basketball, and they're going to try to get her to slow down just a little bit, and they do. And now Columbus Grove has an opportunity to inbound the basketball. That'll be the last foul 
for Miller City to give before Columbus Grove will be back at the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Balti inbounds to Ockmoody. Ockmoody skip past the Ruth Myers. Over to Abby Stecksholdy. Grove looking to draw a foul. They're going to be patient with the basketball. They don't have to shoot. Miller City has to get the basketball back, trying to get a turnover. With two minutes to go here, district final. Columbus Grove, nine point lead. See Reyna again getting her hand on the ball, almost forced a turnover. Ooh, good job with those quick hands as they're able to double in the corner. It looks like he got a foul on Miller City, so that should send Ruth Myers to the line. And they got what they wanted. They got Ruth Myers in the corner and did a nice job of doubling. Myers did a nice job of splitting that double team and drawing the foul, getting herself an opportunity now to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. And boy, these free throws are important. Um, Ruth Myers comes in shooting 57% from the free throw line, so if you're going to foul someone, that's who you want to foul. Myers getting an opportunity. The second one here. Gets it to go. Pushes the lead to 10. A minute 40 left in the ball game. Left in this district final. Miller City needs a lot in a short amount of time. Ball goes to the corner, Erford, triple try. Maddie Erford just a little long, and look who comes down with the rebound. Laura Nakabuti comes down with the basketball, and they're gonna get Isabel Reno with another foul. It's gonna give Columbus Grove the opportunity to go back to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Yeah, Laura Nakabuti is shooting 70% from the free throw line on the season. I wanna thank Production Products and Grove for their sponsorship tonight, they're hiring, they're offering great opportunities to advance your career. Also, free on-site medical clinics. You can apply today at midwayproducts.com. I want to thank Production Products in Columbus Grove. Lauren Moody, these famous recipe chicken free throw line. Misses that one. Battling for the rebound is Maddie Erford. Good job by Miller City to control that possession. But they need points and need them in a hurry. Isabel Rina, triple try. Isabel Rina, just a little bit far. Nicole Nesby, good rebound. And Grove now controlling it as Coach Ross Hireman tells his Miller City team, we got a foul quickly, ladies. We got a foul inside to Nicole Nesby. Wide open. Nice pass by Ruth Myers. Yeah, Ruth Meyer finding Nicole Nesby all wide open. Able to use her left hand for the easy layup here to extend this to a 12 point lead. 47-35 on the simplified flooring scoreboard. Missed shot by Erfer, comes down with Nesby with a good rebound, and it's Lauren Ock Moody with the basketball, and it's gonna be another foul by Miller City. Ava Ruck is gonna foul Ock Moody. Ock Moody now another opportunity to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Ock Moody misses her first of two, struggling a little bit from the free throw line. She's done everything tonight, 12 points uh, on the scoreboard, but she struggled to put the ball in the hole tonight, but she's done everything else. She didn't struggle on that one, pushing this lead to 13. Maddie Erford with the basketball in the lane, another turnover for the Wildcats. As Ock Moody controls the basketball, Steck Schulte created that turnover. Under 30 seconds to go, and. Off Moody soon to just hang on to it here and run out this clock. And it looks like Columbus Grove is going to get an opportunity to go to the Elida Regional. Yeah, and we saw Columbus Grove. The big difference tonight was that second quarter, you know, really extending that lead, limiting Miller City to only three points. And really, that's been the difference here tonight. You know, great season for Miller City. Battle here, got all the way to the district final, but it's going to be Grove moving forward. Columbus Grove will face the winner of Toledo Christian and Gibsonburg next Wednesday night. Columbus Grove gets the victory in this district final at Ottawa Glandorf at 48-35 on the simplified four and scoreboard. We'll be back with the post-game show and the Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner. You've been watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. We just witnessed the Columbus Grove 
Lady Bulldogs getting the district final victory over the Miller City Wildcats, 48 to 35 in this Northwest District Division Four final. Tonight's Stolly Hustle Award insurance winner. You can check out all the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And we talked about it a little bit, Josiah, but a lot of different people that we could have picked tonight, but who are we going with? Yeah, we're going with Nicole Nesby, number 23, the post player. You know, really was the difference there in the second half. You know, didn't, weren't able to find her much in that first half, but in the second half, she came out ready to play. You know, got some easy buckets, got some big rebounds, you know, did a little bit of everything, a couple blocks on the night, you know, but really cemented herself in the paint and controlled that area all night. So our Stolly Hustle Award winner is Nicole Nesby. Yeah, it's been a, it was a great game. I mean, it, it felt like Columbus Grove was just going to push this thing wide open in the second quarter. But Miller City did a great job of battling back and allowing themselves to get back into this game. Great season by Miller City to have nothing to be ashamed of for making it this far. Yeah, like you said, I think once your scrappy team, you know, continued to battle, you know, cut it down to a nine-point game there. We thought Columbus Grove was going to run away with up 15, but they really battled back, never gave up. You know, great season for this Wildcats team. We look at Columbus Grove now. They move on to the Elida Regional. They'll play next Wednesday night at 6 p.m. at the Elida Fieldhouse. They'll take on the winner of Toledo Christian and Gibsonburg. And they came out in this game, the number two seed in the district, and really came out with the bang from the get-go. Yeah, you know, Coach Schrader's got to be happy with this team. A well-balanced game tonight. You know, sometimes this year they've struggled where it's only been Ock Moody and Nesby, but the entire team really showed up tonight. Seven different players scoring for them, you know, and all playing well and knocking down some big shots. So congrats to Columbus Grove and good luck moving forward. As we've seen, uh, Miller City receive their runner-up uh, trophy. We'll see. Uh, Columbus Grove will have an opportunity here to win their district title and get their championship trophies as well. We want to thank everyone for coming here tonight, tuning in. We want to thank Jacob O'Neill. He's done everything tonight. He's run the camera. He's going to edit this back in the studio. He's going to put all this together for us. So we thank Jacob for all of his efforts. We want to thank you as well for tuning in. And all of our sponsors tonight, Simplified so Flooring Scoreboard, these famous recipe chicken, our free throw sponsor, our quarter sponsor, and our first call of the quarter, production products, and finally our Stolly Hustle winner. We want to thank Stolly Insurance for that. 48-35, Columbus Grove advances to the regionals. They'll play next Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in tonight. This is John Zerby from Josiah Stover saying so long, everyone.